Hi, my name is Jessica, and today I'm going to talk about enantioselective synthesis of ephedrine using an enzyme from the fungus Aspergillus niger. Before we start talking about the project, we need, we need some background. Most people know Louis Pasteur for developing pasteurization, but he has many other achievements in the field of microbiology and chemistry. Several of his chemistry papers focus on the biological significance of chirality. In 1948, he isolated the enantiomers of a racemic mixture, mixture of RR tartaric acid with the mold penicillin glaucum, which is found in cheeses. To understand his work, we need some definitions first. Isomers are com compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structures. Here we have an example. First, we can look at 2-pentanol and 3-pentanol. We can count the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens in each structure, and we will see that they are the same, although they are not connected in the same way. A type of isomers are stereoisomers. Stereoisomers uh, are isomers that have their atoms connected in the, the same order, but have a different three-dimensional arrangement. Here we have another example. We can see that in the first molecule we have uh, in the left side one hydroxyl group and one hydrogen. In the second one we have one hydrogen and then one hydroxyl group. In the third one, we have two hydroxyl groups, and in the fourth, we have two hydrogens. So, stereoisomers are divided into enantiomers and diastereoisomers. We'll talk about enantiomers, which are non-overlapping mirror images. To explain this, we will use a very common example, that is, the hands. Each has, hand has five fingers one index, one finger, one thumb, one little finger, one ring finger, and the palm. One could say that both hands are the same, but if we place one over the other, they do not overlap. I mean, one does not cover the other because they do not have the same configuration. The same thing happens with enantiomer molecules. When uh, sorry, when we imagine that we observe this molecule in a mirror, we find that the first one does not overlap with he, its mirror image. So, enantiomers are chiral molecules, which means that they exist in two forms, left and right. These two forms together are called a racemic mix mixture, which is a mixture in equal, equal parts of both enantiomers, the right and the left. Both enantiomers of a molecule with a chiral center have the same physical and chemical properties. This represents a difficulty when you want to separate them. For example, a racemic mixture could not be distilled because both uh, enantiomers would have the same boiling point. The separation of pure enantiomers from a racemic mixture is called resolution. So, what Pasteur did was to separate racemic mi a racemic mixture by taking advantage of a property of the fungus Penicillium glaucum, which fits only on one enantiomer of the racemic mixture of tartaric acid. After Pasteur's work, many resolution methods have been developed. Most of these require very expensive reagents and extreme reaction conditions. The use of of, of other microorganisms for resolution, they are microorganisms containing epoxide hydrolase, has been reported. Some of these are Aspergillus niger, Bacillus sulforensis, Rhodococcus species, and many others. However, they often have a limited spectrum of substrates and low reaction rates. Also, the enantioselectivities that can be achieved using these strains are often too low. Many drugs are enantiomers from racemic mixtures, which are usually separated by 
High Performance Liquid, HPLC, uh, which is a very expensive technique, or synthesize using chiral sol solvents, which are very expensive as well. So, how does the enzyme epoxide hydrolase works on the resolution of racemic mixtures? Uh, its role as a biocatalyst has been explored for only a few decades now. Initially, its use for, for biotransformation was hampered by the limited av availability of the enzyme, but it's now produced on a large scale. The adaptability of the epoxide hydrolase as a biocatalyst catalyst in organic synthesis is due to some characteristics. It's a cofactor independent enzyme. It's ubiquitous in nature. It can exhibit high BGO and enantioselectivity. It can act on the presence of organic solvents and it can be partially puri purified and used on as an enzymatic powder without noticeable loss in enzymatic activity op upon storage. The basic mechanism for epoxide hydrolases involves the nucleophilic attack of an ASP residue on the primary carbon of the sus substrate leading to covalently bound ester in intermediate. This is thought to be the rate determining step for epoxide hydrolase. There are three possible pathways for the enantioselective ring opening of our racemic epoxide, as you can see in the slide. Ephedrine is a drug used to, pre to prevent low blood pressure, asthma, and narcolepsy. It's a substitute amphetamine and alkaloid present in various plants, in several plants. It works mainly increasing the activity of norepinephrine. Norepinephrine, sorry. Epinef ephedrine exhibits optical isomerism and has two chiral centers, as you can see in this slide. Uh, giving rise to four is stereoisomers. By convention, the pair of enantiomers with the stereochemistry 1R2S and 1S2R is designated ephedrine, while the pair of enantiomers with the stereochemistry 1R2R and 1S2S is called pseudoephedrine. This current work presents. Oh, sorry. <laughs> This current work presents an available alternative for the synthesis of ephedrine with the use of microorganisms. Organisms, organisms reported in papers that provide enantioselectivity will be tested to determine which has the greatest enantioselectivity and yielding in the synthesis of ephedrine. Most, oh sorry again, most of the L ephedrine or levo ephedrine produced today for official medical use is made synthetically as the extraction and isolation process of the plant E. sinica and is tedious and no longer cost effective. The microorganism evaluated will be Aspergillus, Aspergillus niger, niger, since it contains epoxide hydrolase and it's very, a very common fungus. The role of the epoxide hydrolases in microorganisms is still poorly understood. In some cases, epoxide hydrolase activity is necessary for the use of a carbon substrate. Therefore, epichloridrine is used as a carbon source for the culture of pseudomonas. An epoxide hydrolase transforms the epichloridrine dehalogenase. Glycerol is then used by pseudomonas, uh, and glycerol is used by pseudomonas for growth. Uh. Okay, this is what I was talking about. Uh, Aspergillus niger epoxide hydrolase is an intracellular homotetrameric non glycosylated enzyme with a molecular mass of 45 kilodaltons of each monomer, which distinguishes it from other known epoxide hydrolases. However, the main characteristics of the Aspergillus epoxide hydrolase are its strong and antioselectivity in esterine derivate, de derivatives. The absence of, of a cofactor in production facilitated by recombinant strains. It can be therefore produced in a larger scale. 
The box that had released activity of Aspergillus niger, niger consists of hydrolyzing epoxides to neighboring diodes. The enzymatic mechanism is in two stages. The first step involves a catalytic triad. The, um, the epoxide is first opened by a specific transnucleophilic attack carried out by the aspartic acid, as you can see in the slide, a residue leading to the formation of an ester type covalent intermediate. This intermediate is hydrolyzed by an histidine activated water molecule in cooperation with another aspartic acid residue. To release the diol produced and the native enzyme. The transformation of the covalent form into a diol is the limiting step. If the enantioselective synthesis proposed turns out to be successful, the cost of the ephedrine synthesis will be a lot cheaper. That's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and the references will be in the description box. Thanks.